I'm Sari Kimball, and I've done just about everything in the food industry. I have helped hundreds of packaged food business entrepreneurs, and now I want to help you make your delicious dream a reality. Whether you want to be successful at farmer's markets, online, or wholesale onto store shelves, food business success is your secret ingredient. I will show you how to avoid an expensive hobby and instead run a profitable food business. Now let's jump in. Hey there, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. This podcast, I am so looking forward to it. You have no idea. I am going to be wearing a couple of hats here. I am going to be both the podcast host and also um, going back and forth about uh, wearing my farmer's market manager hat and owner hat. And uh, I'm going to be talking with an awesome guest with Nicole Jarman. And she is also owns a farmer's market. And so this is your opportunity, opportunity to get a little peek behind the curtain and to get some great tips and tricks about being more successful at a farmer's market, especially during COVID. Like it is possible for you to have a great season, whether you're in a winter season or a summer season or year round. I love farmer's markets. I love talking about farmer's markets. I own a farmer's market. It's such a great place for both people to, like some people want to build a long-term um, business out of working at a farmer's market. And then I have a lot of people who uh, want to start there as a place to um, experiment and get market feedback and test and then launch their product into other sales channels. So welcome. And this is going to be such a fun episode. I can't wait for you to listen. So many great gems here. And I want you to get signed up for my um, masterclass. I have a farmer's market masterclass already, and I'm going to update it. So on March 24th, uh, sorry, on February 24th, I'm going to go live and you can get registered for this updated farmer's market masterclass over at foodbizsuccess.com forward slash masterclass 2021. And the link will be down in the show notes, of course. So please go and get registered for that. If you are thinking about starting at a farmer's market this season, or if you're already at a farmer's market, this is going to be really, really helpful for you as well. So I invite you to get signed up for that and on to the interview. I am so excited to welcome Nicole Jarman onto the podcast today. And Nicole is with, uh, she's co-founder of uh, Hobnob Events. And Nicole's been managing the South Pearl Street Farmers Market in Denver for 15 of its 19 years. And I believe that it is, it's got to be the largest um, farmers market in Denver, but I'll let her speak to that. Uh, but she is uh, striving to support and enhance the local community by providing a farmer's market experience where a great variety of fresh and wholesome products can be found. So 15 years, is it the largest one? Welcome, Nicole, by the way. <laughs> Hi, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I, we've got to be pretty close to the largest kind of vendor number wise. Um, I mean, when we in 2007, when I took the market over, it was 25 vendors and we're 130 vendors now. That's so amazing. Yeah, I think it's, I definitely think I go to a lot of farmers markets. <laughs> I think it's probably the largest. <laughs> Um, and then I'm going to be wearing, like I said, two hats where I'm the podcast host, but also I am a market manager. I own a winter farmer's market called the Fort Collins winter farmer's market, original name there. <laughs> but, uh, um, so we're an indoor farmer's market and we're the only market. It's a true farmer's market in Colorado. And we're the only one. So it's been there, um, this is the 15th or 14th year, I think. I've been involved with it for five and an owner for two. So that's a little bit of my background with farmer's market. So I was telling Nicole, I want this to be like a peek behind the curtain a little bit. Like we were saying like, 
how much advice do vendors really want from us? Like for us to like be like, hey, you know, you could do this or could do that. But this is our opportunity to just share our advice, what we see, um, how we see people being more successful, and just to share like what's going on with COVID and and some of those practicalities. But um, consider this uh, unsolicited advice <laughs> from two market <laughs> managers here. So um, how did you actually get like because you're an event company. So did somebody approach you and say, hey? <laughs> well, well, and I wasn't an event company when I okay. started running the Pearl Street Farmers Market. I owned a local attractions TV channel. Oh. So when you used to go to hotels and check in, you know, when you check in your room, the TV station that came up and said, while well, you're here, go eat dinner at Appaloosa Grill and go to Red Rocks. Oh, gotcha. um, okay. So I had, I had taken that channel over um, from, from someone and I was pitching the channel to South Pearl Street and they said, we should definitely be on your channel. We've got this great farmer's market um, and they wanted to start a music festival and had all these ideas. And so mm. I said, well, I live in the neighborhood. If you want committee members, call me. And they called a week later and said, actually, we need a market manager. So I came into running the farmer's market with, I'd, I'd had some previous event experience. So I came in with event experience, but not experience in the, the, food, agriculture, farmer's market world. So there was a, a big learning curve for me yeah. um, when I came in. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, and the first was, yeah. I've never run <laughs> a farmer's market. Was, <laughs> yeah, you just, uh, I think really understanding, I think when you, I, for me, when I think farms and I think the world of agriculture, you, you think of salt of the earth people and like really honest and really like true, um, expressions. And I, I really, I spent a number of years breaking down what we were trying to achieve at the farmer's mm. market. And this, this whole conversation of local food and locally grown and what is, what is local right. is local, you know, a certain amount of miles. Is it the state of Colorado? Is that, you know, what, what, what's it, is it the closest surrounding area that that right, I didn't right. be grown. Yeah. So, so it was a, a huge learning experience for me yeah. um, well, to just you're... dive into to that and what we were trying to offer people. I love it. Yeah. Well, now you're crushing it. Yeah. Like we have a, um, an Alaskan fish uh, vendor at our market, right? right? Caleb's Catch, who's amazing. Right. And he like is part owner of the boat and used to, but like obviously yeah. not within a 400 mile. <laughs> radius but right, right, not getting right, howled right. in Colorado so <laughs> <laughs> right and I have gotten to a point where I think it's about being able to ask the questions yeah. of the producer yeah. um, and really understanding what you're consuming yeah. as a food product I love it. Um, so that you get closer with your food yeah so obviously farmers markets are made up of multiple you know typically I put them in categories of farmer rancher like raw produce, meat, eggs, mm -hmm. and then craft, kind of all the, the non-food. Mm -hmm. And then of course, my audience is all about um, packaged food. So that's definitely who we're going to focus on today. Yes. Um, but <laughs> so for me, COVID hit as we had, I think, I think we had two more markets, two or three more markets. And I was in the, like, I was in a winter market. So, um, it was all happening <laughs> in live mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like on the phone with, um, the health department and they were like, no, no mm -hmm. proceed as normal. And then it was like March 13th or something, right. That weekend yeah. was supposed to be a market. Mm -hmm. And literally on Friday they said, nope, everything's shut down. So, <laughs> and then yeah. it was like, well, do, now what's going to happen? So long story short, we ended up canceling the last, you know, three more, three markets of my mm -hmm. season. And then that was March. And then a couple months kind of passed. So what were you, what was going on in your world? <laughs> because you were gearing up for oh, gosh. a main, right. main market, like your usual market. Right. Right. So we pretty quickly got on the phone with vendors and did a zoom call mm -hmm. and said like, what's going on with everybody? Like, how do you feel? What are your 
concerns, what's happening in your world to just kind of try to and say, we don't know what this yeah. is going to look like, but we're, we're working towards figuring it out. Right. So I think, cause I, I think what I've really learned through all this is communication is key. Like people just, they just want to like know that you're thinking about yeah. it or like know that you're still there. They just want like that touch point. So we, we talked with vendors and said, you know, we first we started with, okay, well, we don't know if the market's, you know, we open mid May, we open, we're opening Mother's Day weekend. We were supposed to open Mother's Day last year. We pushed back a week because of COVID. But um, so we said, we're going to hope to still open. We don't know. In the meantime, what can we do? Right. So we started preparing the lists to, you know, send a, all our databases and say, this is where you get these products. Please support your local vendors, you know, support small businesses. And then we started an online market um, that we ran until, well, we ran through the season actually, oh, but cool. the idea was that we'd run just until the market started. Um, so we really just tried to understand like what's everybody experiencing. And at first all the vendors, it felt like there was this, this, this fear and this concern and we can no longer, you know, what happens with our distribution to restaurants. Um, and then very quickly, a lot of my vendors had their best years ever because people really did become a lot more conscious of who they were purchasing their food from and where they were getting their food. And I think, you know, that desire to like, we've been on that trajectory to support yeah. local, but I do think that COVID really made people think like, oh my gosh, how do we keep these small businesses alive? A hundred percent. And the, yeah, that was kind of the, you know, the next question is like, how did COVID affect <laughs> yeah. um, people's purchasing? And I saw that too. I mean, not, you know, I, my market ended, but then I was shopping and kind of observing right. mm -hmm. and, and it does, it did seem like there, I mean, grocery stores were like running out of product, <laughs> meat supplies were right. low. And I know like ranchers and produce and, mm -hmm. and, and even value added, right. Got kind of like people were like, yes, I want to know, I want to support local. It was that double whammy. I'm like, I want to support local and you have food <laughs> that I need. Right, right. Right. You actually have eggs and the grocery store doesn't. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah, I would imagine that a lot of people had really great seasons, even though we were all in this stage of like, I have no, I like none of us knew what was going to happen. Right. I'm like, Oh yeah, right. we'll be open by June. Like, you know, this will all be done. Oh, gosh, right. <laughs> like, no. Right. I mean, we have, we have live music at the market and we were like, well, I'll just cancel music through June. And then, you know, by July, yeah. we'll probably have a back. Yeah. And then I was like, no, no live music that name right. this year. But, um, you know, it was with the market, um, because we had to limit the number of people that came into the market and we had, a you know, had entrances and exits we, we didn't know what that was going to look like or, or how that was going to affect sales. And there was this part of us that said it might be better because then people who are coming are really there to shop. They're really committing to shop. They'll purchase as opposed to kind of the social Sunday morning, which we love, yeah. you know, come right. eat, drink, walk around. But like the people who are coming, like they've, they're making a commitment. They're standing in line, <laughs> they're waiting, they're following traffic flow. Yeah, because you guys really um, locked so that, down. Like, I know when I went to that market a couple of times, like you have to wait in line. It was all roped off. I yeah. mean, you guys went really, <laughs> really off, like 100%. Like, <laughs> Thank you. We, we tried. We tried. Yeah. We still, um, yeah. Were you taking Health reservations? Still came and gave us a hard time. Oh. No, no, and I thought about doing reservations. Um, I know both. County but we didn't, we didn't do that, reservations. I'm, but... um, and I, yeah, I don't know. I'm glad we didn't do reservations. I think that maybe hindered a little bit of traffic. Yeah. That, yeah. That, mm -hmm. So you still saw pretty good numbers, but obviously you had to space things out. But I do think people were buying more, like, and, and they had to buy yeah. things. So one thing that COVID, ha obviously we had to space everybody out six feet, mm -hmm. um, at, you know, at least get everybody spaced out. You had traffic flow, mm -hmm. you had everything roped off. Um, and, uh, and then sampling went away as well, which of course yeah. for like your value added food, that's a huge piece of how you get people over there. But I saw what I saw, and I don't know if you saw this is people being much more willing to just obviously buy untasted, yeah. right? Like 
either like, I'm going to support the people I already know, or like, oh, it's seaweed gel. Okay, sure. Like, I'll try it, you know, because that was one of your vendors. And I remember like, yeah, and yeah. they did give me um, a little ramekin that was sealed, you know, so that I could yeah. go and try it later. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's a great idea for sampling. Some people got really creative, yeah. like at a hot sauce vendor who like had them all in like little, you know, inch by inch packages so that they would hand them out to people. Right. Um, but I did, I did have a handful of vendors say like, thank goodness, I don't have to sample. Like, it's <laughs> so great. Yes. And I do think, I think it probably depends a little bit on the, the price point or how familiar people were with the vendors. Right. Um, you know, so if it's a vendor who had been there for years, I think it went as well. But um, yeah, most people took, I felt like we're willing to take chances on products. I agree. And they were just like, yep, I'm in like, <laughs> give me three of them. It, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. I want to and I have actually some of my, some of my wine vendors said that actually, you know, and that's a big, you know, yeah. and it's one thing to taste olive oil. It's another thing to taste wine. Right. I mean, and people just, yeah. So yeah. I think, and you, uh, you alluded to this question coming up, but I think it's whether you you are a business that samples or not, it's so much about your presentation. Mm -hmm. I mean, your presentation of your booth, your presentation of your product, your presentation of you. Oh my gosh. You know, we are going to dive into that for sure. (laughs) But the last thing I want to say about COVID because, well, two things. So obviously like, what do you expect for this season coming up? Pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping, um, we can have some, we can add some tables and have some on-site eating if you're sitting, mm. um, you know, already teat food was all packaged to go. I'm hoping maybe we can have some music back. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, as for spacing and entrances and exits and monitoring traffic flow and the number of people in, I think it's going to look the same. Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to say, <laughs> I'm going to try to make this sound really positive because I know that everyone, everyone was affected by COVID, of course, like every, every vendor, every business owner, and everybody has sort of had to pay a cost, literally a financial Mm -hmm. cost because of COVID. And I guess I just want to remind people, vendors listening, like vendors are not the only one that was impacted financially by COVID. And I know for me, and I'm sure for you, like, I had to hire, I actually had to hire two additional staff. Um, Mm -hmm. I, they have worked longer hours, uh, more hours. Uh, There has been additional materials, obviously all the like shields and sign it. We've had to invest so much more in signage. So much, so many signs. Yeah. And um, just a lot more, obviously time involved in coordination and figuring things out and communication. So I just want to remind people, um, with, you know, vendors, when they're like upset about fees, like what are my market fees going towards? And, you know, maybe if you had to do a price increase Mm -hmm. or something, we did have to raise, um, we rose our percentage of sales by 1% for, um, for our craft Mm -hmm. and our, uh, our value added, we were pretty low, Mm -hmm. but just, we've had to cover those costs, you know, and it's been like, I'm all in and I'll do it. And we were actually able to get a a small grant that has helped a ton that was specifically for COVID. But um, Mm -hmm. yeah, like it, it doesn't stop at the vendor. So just something to consider for people (laughs) listening that like, we were all affected too, as managers. And I'm sure you had a lot more staff involved. Yeah, I mean, we estimated our increased cost at about ten thousand yeah. dollars for everything that we did um, for COVID, plus um, some other things we had to tackle. We, you know, we had the health department show up with some vendors not wearing masks, and we incur those citations and fees oh and things that go with it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you take is the market manager. You take the the risk and really the onus for everybody doing things correctly. Right. And that's why when uh, my staff or myself have to get, you know, cause we're in the, we were in the winter and of course over November and December and things were like, like inching back and then went to red. And we yeah. like, we actually ended up having to space people out 
eight feet, 10 feet in some cases, because the health department came in and said it's not enough. And then people weren't wearing their masks correctly. And we were mm-hmm. like, hey, God, you know, you need to wear your mask. Help us. Yeah, help, help us. us. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I mean, one guy actually like totally, one vendor blew up on one of my staff members and she called me and was upset. And I said, he's out. Like, no, we have zero tolerance. Mm-hmm for yeah. if you can't wear your mask correctly and then you're going to get upset at us for telling you like we will get shut down or incur fines from the health department mm-hmm. like there's I have 70 vendors at mine which is a lot for an inside oh that's a lot yeah. so you know what you want to take away 70 vendors potential sales yeah. because you can't wear your mask so that's my little rant. <laughs> I'll try not I, to go down I, the rant. I, I, Yep, yep. Nope, I'm right there with you. So, anyway, and then I was curious, did you have new vendors, like new packaged food people, like brand new businesses come on? Or do you accept people throughout the season? Or was it kind of like flat, like we're no, out of we, room? We no, accept, we accept people throughout the season. We don't have a ton of room to grow, but we do accept throughout Um so we had people join throughout. And then we also, we don't do a lot of crafts okay. anyway, yeah. um, but we do kind of kitchen focused items. Okay. So, you know, Makes if sense. you're a knife sharpener or knives or maybe aprons, we don't have aprons, you have but like, you know, if there's something that yeah. relates to the kitchen. And you have like body but we have the merchants too, like people. We have body products. Help. Body help. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when we have the merchants from South Pearl street have the ability to set up a booth. Oh, that's so right. that's kind of where our non mm-hmm. kind of food, food body yeah. products come from. But, but we had a couple, anybody craft related. We, we, it took us about a month until we let them in. Cause that was what, how I that's understood what, health yeah. regulations was exactly. Yeah. So, so, and just to be clear, yeah, a farmer's market was declared an essential business. I know I've gotten some heat from, community a few people like on Facebook saying you know I can't believe you're holding a market indoors it's COVID and it's like no no like you go to the grocery store you go to the grocery store like this is actually spaced out way more than a grocery aisle and Mm -hmm. we're supporting local businesses this is food and we told you know we we did allow craft vendors in but we told them like if we, you know, if it goes back to the way it was in June or July, like where it was like essential business, like, sorry, we have to, we'll yeah. have to take you out, but we haven't had to do that. So, um, yeah, but just to be clear with people, like farmers markets are essential businesses and they are a great way to support mm-hmm. local businesses. And so, mm-hmm. all right, enough on that. Um, so let's talk about <laughs> ways like our little, uh, you know, three to five, we'll, we'll kind of go back and forth ways that producers can really be successful, stand out, like everything, like from the start all the way through the actual markets, closing up all of that. Like, so I'll let you, I'll let you start. Um, and you can just any of your top three, what do you think? What's, what's your number okay. one, uh, way that a producer can be successful oh my gosh um I mean stand up and smile (sighs) even when you're wearing a mask people can tell (laughs) even when you're wearing a mask you can see it in your eyes even when you're wearing a mask yes yes just uh yes just just help people feel like you want them to come up to your booth and you want to talk to them and you want to share what you have yeah um because it's, and I, it's so funny because I very rarely have been on the other side. You know, I've spent 15 years producing farmer's markets. It's been a very rare occasion that I have sat on the, in the booth right. on the, the vendor side. And then it's a long day to stand and to smile and to not look at your phone, but it makes all the difference in the world. It does. Yeah. That phone, I mean, I walk by and I I observe a lot, you know, whether it's my own market or a summer market and I walk by and I kind of watch people and yeah, they're, they're on their phone, head down, sitting in their like, I used to have a guy that had like one of those camp chairs, you know, that are like really low and like reclining and I'm like, dude, (laughs) 
the you know the the I feel like because it's a it is a long day you know a, a bar stool yeah, or something tall so you can like yeah you know yeah they have those rest, foldable but you're still like so in my I have a course called farmers market jumpstart course and uh mm-hmm. um which I should tell you about and give you like a link to share with your yeah. people. But I have a, yes. I have a, all my favorite things like Sari's favorite things for markets. Um, and I love and one of them is like one of those folding and it folds. So it's nice and compact yeah. that it's a folding bar stool that gets you up higher. And so you can kind of be resting, yeah. <laughs> resting your butt on the stool, but you still look like you're engaged and standing. Yeah. And not yeah. In like a recliner. It's a than like this. <laughs> reclined like yeah yeah because exactly. and a couple of these um because I'll tie into that um around signage and pricing so I think it's important for vendors to remember that like so I have been on the other side I actually used to work at a farm work for a farm and so I would help mm. with farmers markets and I've done you know, with Whole Foods and whatnot. I mean, I've, oh, I've been behind the other side and yeah, I totally get it. Like wear comfy shoes, wear, um, have layers. I mean, I have a whole kit, event kit, um, yeah. ideas that you need to bring, but, um, it's like, you have to remember that as a vendor, like you're there all day, but you're, you're not there for you. You're there for your customers And you need to make it as comfortable and easy as possible. As human beings, I don't think that we love approaching people, right? It's like, it's a little bit scary. And Mm -hmm. we do not, definitely do not like asking how much something is. Like it's very Mm -hmm. uncomfortable for customers to do that. So I always say, do not put your customers in the position of having to ask how much anything is. Make your pricing Mm -hmm big, bold. Again, I have like links to chalkboards or like larger signage, but Mm -hmm. make it simple. Don't have it be like, you know, 18 different packages, (laughs) like pricing (laughs) combinations, like, or have the pricing at the individual products if you have a lot, but make the pricing really, really easy to understand because the customer does Mm -hmm. not want to ask you. They will they will walk away most likely before they have to ask you how much something is. So (laughs) that's definitely Mm -hmm. one of mine, like money is always a little bit awkward. And so just make it super easy for people. Um, And, and yeah, having that great energy of like, I'm smiling, I'm happy. I'm happy to be here. Even if you're not, (laughs) even when your feet hurt, right? but like you're here to get people to come to you. And so putting out great energy. Mm -hmm. And I think there's an interesting medium to that because there are the people who, um, I think it's the, my, the minority of people that like are really outgoing and want to call people over. And I think there's a fine line. You want to be invited, but you don't want to feel pressure to go. Right. So I think that. Yeah. I don't like that. people cattle calling me like, Hey, you, yeah, get yeah. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's in our, it's in our regulations that there's, you know, that you can't do that or you can't stand outside your booth and hand things out. Yeah. Um, Cause I think it makes people uncomfortable. Yeah. There is that balance for sure. Um, mm-hmm. All right. What's another one you have? Oh, I mean, I, I mean, so you talked about the person, but then you talk about the booth. I mean, you think about that, that, beautiful package or sign or like the ones who do it like oh go crafty like you think of like a uh hoogie vendor where it just like feels good like just I mean really putting an effort into like what your space looks like what about the Um, one I love at your market I think they're still there is patter bar is a good example yes yes just like the really clean beautiful packaging rebel bread just like that Mm bread of like beautiful loaves of rye and sourdough bread and these big beautiful croissants but it just you know and it just it looks fresh and it looks full right you want it to look abundant and like there's like one and I know COVID there's some issues there right but like maybe you need screens up or you know but still like how can you create Mm -hmm. it something looking Mm -hmm. abundant and what I love about 
Paterbar, because I'll kind of expand on that a little bit, is um, they have that table <clears throat> that they custom made. Mm-hmm. And then they have, because they have three bars, at least at the time. And then they had um, like dips in the table. And then they had like the ingredients uh-huh. in the bars. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I love that. I love like, yeah, you can't sample, but you know, I have a seasoning guy and he's a client and works at some markets. And I told him, I was like, you need to put like, at least pour the seasonings into a bowl. Like not that people are tasting it or you know getting up close, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. people can see the product. They can see the different ingredients. So if you have lemon and ginger, like buy a lemon, buy a thing of ginger and put it yeah. out. Cause it does feel mm-hmm. like now we get a sense, like we're, it's beyond the package. Like, Oh, you know, like, that's so cool. Right. There's... Right. It's like, but, and it's like real food then. Yeah. Like, oh, this is, exactly. this is like, this is again, this is what I'm consuming. This is what I'm like. Right. It brings you closer to your, yeah. to your food. And we'll put up which is a picture goal. of a patter bar and some of these other ideas, but you know, they have a really nice backdrop. Their tents clean. I mean, if you have a, a jankety tent that's like, <laughs> mm, that's dirty, that's dirty and like yeah. sagging, pull down, pull down the corners. Cause that top, you know, once you, once you push the tent off, you gotta like pull yep, down the corner make it. so that the tents. Yeah. I mean, because if you care about your appearance, then you care about what you exactly the product that you produced. We um, we're making you- really quick judgments as customers to say like, do I want to mm-hmm. go over there? And yeah. yeah, somebody smiling, somebody looking at me, not mm-hmm. on their phone, being really welcoming. And then your booth looks great and clean. Mm-hmm. And it is, it's a first impression of like, do I, am I even interested in this product? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, you know, if you don't have a tablecloth, I mean, I don't, a guy, my market doesn't have a tablecloth. I'm like, you have to have a tablecloth. Like this looks <laughs> terrible, right? like your right, dirty right? table. You know, and cottage mm-hmm. food producers, for instance, like that is the whole reason why they can only do direct to consumer is because I, as a customer, need to you. We need to work out a trust level. Like I trust your product that you're making in your home kitchen, right? Because I can talk mm-hmm. to you, I can ask you questions, and we can right. build some level of trust. And your right. booth is like first impression. Of of what your kitchen's like yeah, of what I your feel kitchen's good like exactly that you that your cat's not walking around on the <laughs> counter while you're cooking food <laughs> like, right? exactly so care in your appearance care in your your attitude your energy yeah. care in your booth so so important a little rant this is like a little pet peeve of mine but um i really prefer people to get white tents i find that mm-hmm. orange tents blue tents they actually make your food look not great um like they color you in a weird way as a human (laughs) like and they color your food so that's just Mm -hmm. a little note (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) little details that that people don't Mm -hmm. they're like oh the the blue tent's twenty dollars cheaper and i'm like no and get a nice tent if you're outside it's got to last you the whole season Get a nice, get a nice return. It's going to rain at some point. It's going to be windy. You need it to hold you need up. It to hold up. And those like, and you got to wait, pull okay. it out and take it, you know, multiple markets. Yeah. Like oh. you need a, a okay, good let's quality. Let's keep going on that. Wait your tent. Wait it. Yes. Just, just, just put weights on it. You never know. You don't want to be the tent <laughs> going down the street. Just wait it. Just wait it. I'm sure you have in your tips and tricks, like all the different things you can use. Yeah. Yep. I have links to like, here's the weights. Here's the easy ones. I mean, I know people make mm-hmm. their own or whatever, but like, here's the one, here's yeah. the links like, to all the Amazon things. <laughs> I like the, the white tubes that yep. you fill with water, sand that are just like clean and symmetrical yep. and long and clean, yeah. keep it less cluttered. Yeah. Um, I love it. Yeah. Um, Oh, and I guess we should say, you know, if you do have staff, if you're not the only one or you, you are, mm-hmm. you have staff working your booth, communicate your standards about not sitting, yeah. smiling, all of those things, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. maybe we have those expect, you know, expectations of, of ourselves, but then if we don't communicate them to our staff, then right. 
And I find that staff are usually the ones that are the ones on their phones and <laughs> yes, <laughs> not, yes, yeah, not yes, fully yes. invested as, mm-hmm. as you might be if you're yeah. the owner. So, mm-hmm. um, what about like, well, yeah, what else do you want to talk about? I had kind of a list I gave you and ideas, but oh, what's you know, um, this is not necessarily success in selling, but just in being a successful vendor. I think, you know, we notice there's, you know, six weeks into the market or so vendors are kind of doing this reevaluation. Am I as successful as I want to be? Mm-hmm. Like, what can I do to tweak? What can I do to, to do more, which, which is great. I think making sure that, that you communicate with us, if you're wanting to change or add something. And then I think just being super aware of, um, especially when you're working with food, anything that might from a permitting yeah. side of things, how that, how that might tweak things. You know, we certainly um, two years ago had a vendor who had a stable packaged item that didn't need temporary restaurant licensing um, decide that they wanted to, when you could sample that they were going to sample with cream cheese, I think. Yep. And then, mm-hmm. That's you know, <laughs> got a citation because cream cheese is not shelf stable and they, and they don't get the citation. We get the citation. Um, yeah. So I think just, it seems like no big deal. We'll just try this other thing. Um, but I think just being really uh, commun- it's back to that communication yep. piece. If nothing else, communicating with us um, and we'll help you wade through. Yeah. Permitting. It's- yeah. Health department stuff. It's so good. Um, and actually I want to talk about application next anyway, but I'm curious, what do you, what system do you use, um, for applicants when they apply? Oh, we just changed. Yeah, <laughs> We've been a, yeah, I'm actually really excited. So we've been on, we've been on, you know, you apply via form stack and then you, you pay an application fee via PayPal, but then I think we send you your invoice via square and it was, <laughs> and form stack is great. It was kind of, anyway, we just, I like three days before we launched farmer's market applications, I found this, um, a, an event producer had created this, um, software called, it's called astronaut industries. Okay. Um, but it sets up, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Awesome. So anyway, I mean, the, so the application sort of looks the same. But for us, we tag everybody so everybody can get a different communication based on if you're a 10 by 20 or you're a mm. farmer or you have a different thing that goes into place and we just move you, you know, to accepted lists. And so we just switched. So I think it's going to be amazing. Oh, but, that's awesome. We use a but, farmer's market. It's called market manage my market. So it's actually for farmers yeah, markets. Yeah. 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 So, markets, so a yeah. similar thing. I mean, there's some some little things that I wish I could change, but overall compared to oh, what it could yeah. be um, of managing <laughs> Google forms and PayPal yeah. and stuff. So it Gosh, automates yeah. everything. Um, but uh, I mean, I guess I would say with applications, like, first of all, be really thorough. And especially with your products, mm-hmm. like what products are you planning on selling? Because like you said, um, so I, I can speak to Colorado and, uh, and certainly other places, but I'll just kind of give people a quick overview. And, and most states, I'm sure, are fairly similar, even if the um, the specific terminology might be a little bit different. But um, yeah, there's cottage food, which means it's you know shelf stable. It's not potentially hazardous, and there's a limited number of products that you can do under cottage food where you're making it at home. There is um, just a wholesale license, which, which will cover you for not potentially hazardous foods. So shelf stable things mm-hmm. like baked goods or, so this is now you're in a commercial kitchen, but pickles or certain so, you know, barbecue sauces, as long as they're all made, um, you know, commercially that, um, you can go get away with that license. But yeah, when you start getting into ice is a big one, or like if you add mm-hmm. ice to something, you are like in a totally different, yes. um, license yeah. zone. But then, um, like you said, dairy, cream cheese, any kind of milk product meats mm-hmm. is like a whole other thing. So oh, yeah. yeah, like if you were yeah doing something with meat, so you do want to be very thorough in your application about what products you're going to serve. And is it ready to eat? Is it prepackaged? Mm-hmm. Um, 
And then, yeah, just give us all the information and then make sure you're checking your email. I don't know about you, but I can't believe how many people do not read the emails <laughs> that we send. Um, mm -hmm. And then oftentimes, uh, I don't know if you guys do this, but we do like an early bird application and then we, um, we take applications year round or all season long, mm -hmm. but we kind of say, this is the, the period of early bird closes. Mm -hmm. And then we do offer a pay in full discount, um, for those vendors. So as a, you know, as a, as a vendor, just keep, you know, make sure you're checking your email and that you take advantage of those things. Um, and then you get your license, like your certificate of insurance in again, it takes time on our part to go and hound you down for those things. Or we have to be the bad guy right. and be like, hey, sorry, you can't set up today because you don't have your license in. So, right. or your current. Which, or which we don't love because then it affects the flow of the market yeah. and it affects the look of the market yeah. and affects, um, you know, how, yep. it affects how we do on that day. You know, and kind of back to my communication piece, we, we implemented a $10 when you apply fee because we wanted to make sure when people were applying, they were really serious yeah. as opposed to, and, and not that $10 is so much money that like it would break some, you know, I mean, the goal wasn't for it. We just wanted people to think really hard. I didn't want someone. Yep. It's great. If you're thinking about that and you're, sure I <laughs> and you're sitting there at midnight looking at uh, applications, but like, if you fill out an application, we seriously evaluate you and we might deny somebody else because yep. we've accepted you. So if you, thought you wanted to start this business and decide you don't want to, or got accepted to another market or decided you can't do 15 markets. You're only going to do five and we're not one of them. Just like that communication piece, because we go through that a lot and that, you know, we spend, I mean, we get 300 applications. Yeah. So we spend a lot of time comparing and going through and making sure that there's not too much of one thing. And then all of a sudden you deny someone and you accept someone else and that someone else is like, Oh, no, I'm, yeah. You're like, wait. Yeah, whatever. No. So just, you know, that communication, just tell us. Yeah. Just tell us if you've decided you're not interested in our market or you don't have the bandwidth or what it, whatever. whatever. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So we actually have a $50 application fee. Um, I mean, we have to pay yeah. for the software and we get charged per, yeah. per application. Um, and it's also mm -hmm. somebody's time to go through and review all of those and build the spreadsheet mm -hmm. and then. Um, I'm assuming, I'm guessing a lot of markets do this where they limit, like we allow two kombucha and we allow yeah. so many coffee and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, X, Y, Z, right. Whatever your category is. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So we have to like say, oh, well, they've been at the market before and they, they're brand new mm -hmm. and they sign up for all boosts throughout the whole season versus just a couple. And mm -hmm. so there's all this weighing and prioritizing mm -hmm. And <laughs> like, it takes a lot so of time much, so to much. go through these applications. Yeah, yeah. So, so then, okay. So then you, you, you go through all of that time and then you get to the market season. And for us, and first of all, again, put as much information in your application as possible. If you really, really need to be on one side of the street or yep, your product you is need. really, really affected, yep. you need to let us, let, let us know, but also outside. So if you've got a, you've got a plan for being outside. Yeah. Not, you know, I, I, not everybody can be in the shade. Right. Um, exactly. And mine is always, I get to, I get to opening day and I've spent, you know, we have 130 vendors. And when I go through it, I look at, you know, we only have electricity in some places. Right. So who needs electricity? You know, what farmers need their van? Where have people historically been? And then I think really hard about a flavor palette. So, you know, I try really hard not to put like chocolate next to horseradish or you know I try to do like a bread wine pasta cheese olive oil like so it all and you flowers, don't put so like flows. you don't put a don't two put kombuchas next to each other right next to each and other like yeah, yeah two yeah. poppies next to each other yeah you're spacing so, things you out know, always you know that opening day someone's like I don't want to be here and it's like well first of all <laughs> you know <laughs> I you, think that just me. goes, okay, we got to just talk it about this because that yeah. goes into my <laughs> thing about, this is a mistake. This is, I, I want to talk about these. These are the mistakes that I, one of my biggest mistakes I see people make in life, but also <laughs> with the market is like, they 
establish themselves as the complainer right out of the get go. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And like, immediately they come up and tell you how they're unhappy with their booth. They're unhappy with this. They're frustrated. Da, 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 right. And you're like, do you know how long, <laughs> how many hours I have put into this map? And sometimes it is my mistake. And I'm like, Oh, sorry. I put two CBD people next to each other the other day. And I was like, Oh, that is totally my bad. Let me try to fix it. Like, yeah. so sorry. But the way you approach your market, like we are human beings and we're a staff and like, just remember that we're all humans (laughs) come up and be really kind. If you're, if there's some big problem, but I mean, unfortunately, especially in my market, we're in inside a mall. So we're in the foothills mall where it, Mm. it has, um, hallways like big hallways and then we also have been using Mm -hmm. some storefronts that are empty and somebody has to go in the storefront (laughs) like it just I have Mm -hmm. 70 spots and 70 vendors so I'm sorry I know you would prefer Mm -hmm. a different spot but somebody has to go in there and you know we communicated and communicated that like craft vendors are going to be, you know, sorry, you're the lowest on the totem pole because we are an essential business. It's about food. It's a mm-hmm. food farmer's market. And I mean, I had people just pissed, <laughs> like I know. angry. I know. And it's like, mm-hmm. I, I'm all for like you coming up and being like, Hey, this wasn't so great. Like make it, try to make it work. Um, yeah. And like, see if we can, you know, just the way you approach people, I guess, just be mindful about mm-hmm. like how you come up and complain. Cause ultimately it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like if you had kids, right. And they just keep asking you for something and you're like, you kind of start j- digging your feet in the sand and you're like, why would I like, <laughs> you're never happy. Yeah, yeah. Um, it doesn't yeah. matter where I put you or like, Mm -hmm. maybe just deal with it and like make the best out of it because I have seen people because we've had to move people around a lot in my market yeah I know it's summer it's probably more just like here here's your spot especially if people are there the whole season Mm -hmm. um but we've had to move people around a lot and so I can definitely see like okay the people who go with the flow and they're just like okay like I'll make it work their sales are consistent. Like it doesn't matter where I put them. And then it's the Mm -hmm. people like I had one gal who first market was in one spot. We moved her to a different spot. I actually thought it was a better spot. And she was like visibly angry, like red, you know, through her mask. (laughs) I thought she was going to like hurt somebody. She was so mad. And I looked at the sales in that spot and everybody next to her did great and she did terrible. And I'm like, yeah, cause you were mad the whole time. Yeah. Like I would walk by and she was just like, you know, not looking, not happy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can sell your product anywhere with a great attitude and energy. That's <laughs> my belief. Right, right. And I remind myself, too like you never know what kind of day somebody is having yeah and what yeah you know I, I mean just if we all try to approach each other right. with kindness and, and again I too sometimes am on the amount of short fuse and I have to remind myself <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> everything is better with honey than with vinegar what's the how's it go like you get more bees with yes, honey than with vinegar exactly. like oh you know so I mean myself included but yeah if we can all I mean this is so I mean it's we're under so much stress with COVID on top of everything else. Like, right. 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 I've definitely found people. I mean, I, I get it. Like when you're feeling out of control and and as a vendor and then you're like, well, I got to take this out on somebody. (laughs) So like, like, who can I take this out on? The president? I don't know. The market staff. Right. (laughs) Right. So um, that would just be my, I guess if we're going to frame it in positive, like Mm -hmm. just, yeah, yeah, know that like be human about it, mm-hmm. be kind, make suggestions, and also listen. If I'm like, 
Hey, I'm really sorry. I know you'd like a different spot, but it's just not possible. This is your spot. Like, listen mm-hmm. to that. And I don't need to yeah. hear about it every single <laughs> weekend. <laughs> right. Right. Oh man. Oh. Okay. What other, yeah. um, either in a positive way or what other mistakes do you see people make at farmer's markets? If we could pass on another tip. You know, I, I, I don't know. This is an observation more than yeah. anything. I certainly based on product items, um, understand that there are products that maybe people don't need to buy every week. So, yeah. um, you know, they want to come once a month or they want to come every other week or they want to come sporadically. And I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to that. I'm not opposed to working with them. But what I do always remind vendors is if someone comes to the market looking for you and you're not there, then we've lost that customer because then they will just assume you are never there. Mm-hmm. And they'll go to the grocery store, right? Like they just, you know, so, so that is why we encourage as much, you know, participation or being there as often as possible, because we don't want somebody to ever come expecting to see you and not see you. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, Not to mention that also, I think if you're, you know, in some of these products that are more unique and things that people aren't as used to, it takes them seeing you it's like building that trust or building that yeah I mean you know it's a the tried and true marketing um kind of equation or whatever but I think someone needs to see you or hear about you three times before they consider buying so um you know if they see you on the first of the month like I don't know that that's enough for them to build that connection with you even if they're not talking to you every time they're coming they've just seen it in in that yeah. Yeah. hundred um, percent. I love that. Yeah. Repetition. And that's even with the yeah. sampling, right? Like give them your, mm-hmm. your spices, but then like, they're not going to try them right then. So hopefully they go home, they try them and then be there the next yeah. time there. so that they're like, Oh mm-hmm. yeah, I tried them. Yes. Give me yeah. five bottles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So, you know, and the other thing, and, and not that I, I'm not looking for vendors to all give me free things and to, you know, to, but, but it is, it is as a market manager, you know, 130 vendors, it's difficult to try everything. Um, So it's not bad to, you know, uh, to, to give us things. So we, we know what we're talking about. So when someone comes to the market or, you know, I have a friend who calls or someone stops in, like, what are the places we should check out? Who, what are the things we should, the CMOS is a, it's a perfect one. I had a, I had like a weird eye reaction piece and, and I know Samantha who owns the business. Well, she's on the South Pearl street board actually. And I just, I hadn't tried it. Yeah. And I had this weird eye reaction and she gave me some and I put it on topically and I ate it. And then she told me about it. And then I started researching it. And then I told five right. people about right. it. And then I gave it as Christmas gifts, you know? <laughs> so it's, um, you know, we're, we're good ambassadors and we want to be ambassadors for yeah. everybody, but 100%. you know, um, yeah. I think just helping, just helping us be as familiar with your product as possible. And in general, that comes from trying. I it. love that. Yeah. I love it when vendors mm-hmm. are like, Hey, here's a sample take with you. Love for you to try it. I think it's so smart. I think it goes back to like, I'm a big fan of coming from generosity and abundance and not yeah. like, I got to sell every one of these at full price. Like, um, be generous with your neighbors if you can. You know, I know a lot of vendors trade products yeah. and like, it's just good. It's more fun and yeah. to come to the market with feeling full and abundant and share mm-hmm. with your market staff. Yeah. Um, plus, oh. we're doing social media, right? And so you bring us yeah. a treat and then it's like, Oh, let me throw this up on a story or let me put this, yeah. let's talk mm-hmm. about this vendor. Right. So we last year with COVID and didn't had volunteers at all of our entrances and exits. So we had eight volunteers per week at 27 weeks, a lot of volunteers, um, plus a couple others that helped with market boxes. And we asked vendors, um, you know, every week, if they had something to give to the volunteers, we gave the volunteers bags yeah. from a goodies from vendors and like oh my gosh it was so lovely when we didn't feel like we were being a pain by asking for for donations and and then you are then you're sharing then then your marketing to these 
these vendors and they're feeling that abundance. Yeah, and I love it. Same. So we'll end on a very yeah, positive just, note there. Cause it's just like, yes, come to have fun. Like farmer's markets are fun. So don't make it like, yeah. it's all about how you think about it, even as a vendor yeah. and like, <laughs> We're building community, we are. which is, and you're sharing your yeah. products and you're getting people excited. You want to build raving fans and, and those fans are not mm-hmm. always paying customers right away. They're your neighbors. They're the market staff. Cause I know like mm-hmm. I've tried some of my markets products and then now I'm like every week I'm like, oh my gosh, I need my like Bruna's cheese bread. I'm like, this is amazing. How did I not know about this? Like, and now uh-huh. every time she's at my market, I'm like, give me a bag, you know? And so I try to be yeah. really generous, but sometimes you got to like, yeah, just build up to that. Be really generous yeah. with people around you and, and just come to have fun and get on your social media vendors and let your, your people know where you are, tag the market yes. Um, send emails to your people, let them know you're going to be there, like really help us cross promote the market. Cause the better that the market does, you know, if you bring people and your neighbor brings mm-hmm. people like then the better everybody does. So everybody that's does. my last little mm-hmm. nugget is like, get involved, share, yeah. tell people to come and then it helps everybody. Good luck. I'm excited to see. <laughs> Hopefully things will relax just a little so we yeah. can have a little bit more in community music, safely. Of, yeah. yeah, same here. Yeah. We're going to have a, a strolling musician who wants to come oh. and like play his guitar through the mall. I'm like, all right, sure. Like awesome. we can. So let's do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love it. I love oh. it. Well, thank oh. you so much, Nicole. This yes. was really, really fun. And I love farmer's markets. I think it's a great way to test your product, to get it out there, to hear your feedback. Um, And whether it's a lifelong venture or, um, you know, a couple of years or a year, it doesn't matter. Like go, go join a farmer's market. So love it. (laughs) All right. Have a great day, Nicole. You too. We'll talk to you soon. All right. That was amazing. I had so much fun with Nicole and I really hope that helps you to have a more successful season going into farmer's markets, whether they're winter, summer, or year round, um, go into it with a great attitude, um, and just have a lot of fun. They can be so fun if you, if you prepare and you have, um, and you've actually like They can just be so much fun and so good for your business development. If you're willing to do that, go through it and be sure to get signed up for the farmer's market masterclass, the updated version. It'll be live uh, in just a couple weeks here in 2021 on February 24th. And then of course, you'll be able to catch the replay as well. So that is uh, food biz success, uh, forward slash masterclass 2021. And you can either find the sign up to go live, or if you're listening to this after, uh, after this goes live, then you can catch the replay. And that ultimately will talk about the farmer's market jumpstart course, which is such a great course. Um, to give you all of my favorite things. And we go through your pricing and your profitability and scaling up and things to expect, like how much money is it going to cost you? Um, So be sure to tune into the Farmer's Market Masterclass and learn about um, the Farmer's Market Jumpstart course. All right, you guys, until next time, have an amazing week. Are you ready to start that delicious idea that you make in your home kitchen or grow your existing packaged food business and take it to the next level? The most successful food business entrepreneurs have support, guidance, focus, and accountability to help them make it happen quickly without wasting time or money. Plus, I think starting your packaged food business should actually be fun. Food business success is your secret ingredient to creating your food business dream. Please don't go this alone. Check out the private free food business success Facebook group to connect with other foodpreneurs, get your questions answered quickly, 
share your wins, and receive special training and tools I only share inside the private community. Just search for Food Business Success on Facebook or get the link in the show notes. Curious about how Food Business Success can help you? Head over to foodbizsuccess.com and fill out the application to see if you're a great fit for the program. Together, let's make your food business dream a reality.